Hi, and thank you so much for tuning in to Carol's Daily Sauce. Once again, you guys, it's me today on here, and I'm actually doing um, the video for the 30 Days of Taming Our Tongue. Let me hold it up this way on my computer. Um, it's just working that way better today. We are actually on the 27th day. This is a book by Deborah Smith Pagoos, and this book is What You Say and What You Don't Say Will Improve Your Relationships. And those are relationships with everybody, not just um, relationships as, as such as just marriage or um, just uh, relationships in general, relationships with people on your job and just in your daily talking. This is day 27 and what we're discussing on day 27, I cannot believe we only have three more days of this tongue pass. And I will tell you guys this much. This right here has been one of the hardest things that I've tried to do. Um, that I've actually uh, tried to do. But before I go any further, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in to Carol's Daily Sauce. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to click on the bell to be reminded of each and every video that I upload. Once again, what we are doing today is we are discussing the 30 days of taming your tongue, my tongue, our tongue, in the hopes that we will have better communication with the people that we know, with the people that we love, with the people, new people that we meet. And uh, what I did on this is I did not write it on paper. I'm actually just gonna be reading inserts from out of the book. Let me see if I can get mine. Not necessarily inserts from out of the book. I'll be talking about stuff, you know, like we always do with the chapters. This is a very, very short chapter. And it is called The Doubting Tongue. The tongue that doubts itself, the tongue that doubts other people. It's called The Doubting Tongue. The scripture reference is Matthew 11, verse 23. And it says, For assuredly, I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, be moved and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So the author talks about how after um, uh, the 9-11 incident where we had the terrorists that came over and literally blew up uh, the buildings in New York and planes and things of that nature, she actually got on the flight. And when the flight was on the runway, she was very, very, very uncomfortable. Um, did not, she knew that God was, was able to protect her. She knew that God was able to cover her. However, she did experience some doubt. So the whole time on the flight, she quoted Psalms 91. I declare to the Lord that he alone is my refuge, my place of safety, y'all know that. So if you don't know it, Psalms 91. So she ended up um, being on the flight and just feeling kind of unsettled. I can't take my glasses off and it's so weird looking at the camera because I can't even see my eyeballs. Anyway, we do know that the scripture does say in Psalms 91 uh, verse 7 that he orders his angels to protect us wherever we go. So if God in fact orders his angels to protect us wherever we go, then we should not have doubt. We should not have dip, uh, disbelief. Definitely not having disbelief or doubt in God. Um, if you ever find yourself falling into the place of having a doubting tongue, um, you need to become familiar with the promises of God. And I don't know if I've ever shared uh, this with you all through the course of going over the 30 days of taming the tongue, but the Bible has over 7,000 promises in it. And words of the doubt, words of doubt, disbelief and things like that in a doubting tongue, those words come from an unbelieving heart. So if you have doubt, that means that you're actually doubting and saying that God is not able to do what he says that he can do. In the scripture, Romans 10 verse 7, it does says that faith coming by hearing and hearing come hearing by the word of God. 
So the more we assert confidence in our lives as a positive outcome, the more our faith will increase. We often hear and can remember the scripture that we are to have faith, the grain of a mustard seed. Now, I'm not sure if you guys, I cannot wear those glasses and look at this computer. I'm not sure if you guys um, really have actually seen a mustard seed. A mustard seed is so very tiny. So if God in fact wants us to have faith, the grain of a mustard seed, It's not a whole, whole bunch. It's just the fact that you believe that God is able to fulfill every promise that he has given us. We need to not limit God. We need to not limit God or eliminate him. We need to limit and eliminate those who express negativity in our life, whether they be negativity for various uh, uh, goals or different outcomes of things, or even the results that we desire, we have to eliminate those people out of our lives because God does not want us to live with or by a doubting tongue. The scripture says in Proverbs uh, chapter 28, verse 26, that he who trusts in himself is a fool. So if you can believe in yourself and not believe in God, you're a fool. You are a straight up fool. That's what the scripture says. So what we need to do is when we fall into that place of having a doubting tongue, because many of us do, there are times when you have situations where you have been praying out to God and asking God for many, many years, Lord, I need you to fix this. Lord, I am desiring for you to do this. I need for my finances to be corrected. I need for my relationships to be better in which I can speak to people or speak to my husband, speak to my spouse, speak to my wife in a way um, that is um, appealing, in a way in which things are being rectified. But if you don't visually see them, or you're not seeing them in the time or at the moment when you're wanting to see them, then you are doubting, okay? What we have to remember is that, and I say this all the time, and it's scriptural, God's thoughts and his ways are not like ours. He was the only man. And we say man, but God is the spirit. Jesus was the only man who actually walked uh, upon this earth. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and 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 uh, performed miracles and 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 uh, raised uh, the dead and healed the sick. Um, so with that being said, We can't even compare, we're not even worthy enough to compare ourselves with the likeness even of him. His ways and his thoughts are unlike ours. God, um, son Jesus, has no sin. They don't know sin. They know of sin, but they don't, they've never lived a life of sin. So, if the spirit of disbelief plagues you, like, Uh, For instance, I don't believe that I'm ever going to get that degree. I don't believe I'm ever going to get that position. I've went up for that position 10 times on my job and every single time they pass me over. It might have something to do with the fact that you are walking in disbelief. You have to believe um, um, that you are going to receive that uh, that. uh, promotion. You have to believe that God is going to deliver you. You have to, oh, my allergies, excuse me. You have to believe. So if that uh, spirit of belief, uh, disbelief ever plagues you, what you would need to do is to get into a Bible study. And that doesn't necessarily mean a Bible study class, but get in a Bible study and search the scriptures and the verses um, to where you can constantly, every day, all day, quote the scripture and In quoting the scripture, that'll become a part of you, and then you will build belief. Because the thing about the Bible and the thing about God is that the Word of God does declare that God is not a man that he should lie. So all of the promises that Jesus has in the Bible and that he gave us in the New Testament and even in the Old, when when God um, uh, spoke to Moses and to the Israelites, there, it, none of it has ever been a lie. It's always come into fruition. Um, have there ever been times when 
you find yourself speaking in a doubtful way. Yes, most definitely. We've all found ourselves speaking in a doubtful way. Um, the fear of, like I said, of not getting that position, not getting that car you want, not getting um, uh, the degree you want, the hopelessness of um, possibly um, getting and finding yourself in an amicable uh, relationship with a difficult person. You have to have faith to believe that God can and will fix these things. God's children are to live by faith, okay? By faith in God, not by that of a doubting tongue. A doubting tongue does nothing but um, produce doubt. It just pr produces doubt and fear within you. Our attitudes, our conversations will change when we face the reality that apart from God, we can do absolutely nothing. We need God for everything that we have. I, when I say I don't care, I don't mean literally I don't care. But what I'm saying is, when I say I don't care, I mean it in severity. It doesn't mean, it doesn't matter what you think you know. You need God. Um, without God, you can't have everything. Whether you are an unbeliever because you got hurt in the church, whether you are an atheist because you think that we came from muckies or whatever, eventually you're going to have to come to the knowledge of truth. The word of God declares that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And no, this is not an actual Bible study. It is the 30 days of taming our tongue. So we have to be careful what we say with our mouth. And none of us are perfect. All of us are on this journey to being the men and women of God that God has created and desires for us to be. We are to live by faith in God. Our attitudes and conversations will change um, when we realize that apart from God, we are nothing. We have to remember that we need to skip over the skepticism. We need to skip over the doubts and the, doubt, the doubting of others and believe in the best. Believe that God can and will give you everything. Because guess what? Even if you have knowledge, even if you have understanding in anything, what maybe you have mastered whatever it is you're perfect or you think that you're perfect in, that is a gift from God. Don't walk and operate in the doubting tongue. Remember, anything is possible for me if I believe. But in your believing, and in the, that thing that you want to be possible, you have to trust God. I will declare by faith rather than to discuss my doubts because whenever we operate and walk in doubt, it does nothing but pull us down. We don't get anything from it and our faith decreases. Just as the author said, when she, you know, she had never um, had any doubts until after 9-11 happened. And once she got on a plane shortly after, she got to quote in the scriptures because that doubt got into her. Don't walk, ar walk around um, doubting everything and everybody. Trust in God. Trust that God can change people, that God can change situations. And um, he can definitely change you. We need to continue to rely on our skills and our abilities, but we have to remember that our skills and our uh, abilities all are gifts from God. Don't operate in the doubting tongue. It does nothing for you. So that was day 27 of the doubting tongue. We are going to discuss day 26, which was the discouraging tongue. And I mean, the discouraging tongue pretty much speaks for itself um, how we can uh, typically dampen someone's confidence or dampen someone's enthusiasm. For example, if someone comes up with an idea about um, coming up with a new um, product and you may not see their vision, it's not your place to kill their dream. Instead, we can be um, encouragers because when we steal people's dream, excuse the dog, he hears my voice and so he thinks it's someone outside. Um, when those inventors come up with dreams and thoughts and things that they really honestly believe in, you cannot be 
a vision killer. You can't be that person. You should not be that person. Because what you can do is you actually cause a person to abandon their dreams. Remember the scripture says in Ephesians 3 and 20, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. That power is given to you by God. So, don't speak the discouragement into your life nor into the lives of others. Many times discouragement has wreaked havoc on the lives of many, many people. When you think about the Israelites as they traveled and complained, as they went and walked um, uh, in, in the wilderness, they ended up doubting, they doubted uh, everything. They complained, 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 and they wanted to get into the uh, uh, promised land that was flowing with milk and honey, but they just, they couldn't get past the doubting. They couldn't get past the discouragement. They couldn't get past the complaining. So here comes Moses and Moses says, I'm gonna send Joshua and I'm gonna send Caleb along with 10 other leaders into the wilderness and they're going to bring them out and they're going to go into that wilderness into the land of Canaan and they are going to find that land that is flowing with milk and honey. What did the people do? They wanted to discourage. They wanted to discourage. All the miracles that God had had already performed, all the miracles that they had already seen, they still wanted to fall into discouragement, okay? They, they they didn't have to be there 40 years, but because of their complaining spirits, because of their discouragement towards other people and how they spoke to Moses when he said he was going to send Caleb and Joshua into the land, the Lord ended up killing the destroyers. destroyers. He, um, he um, forced them back into the wilderness for 40 years and they, they, they didn't get what it was that they were promised, um, a land flowing with milk and honey because they had doubt. They, they were just discouraged. They were looking at their present situation. They were looking at the present situation, the current situation that they were in and not trusting in God and believing in God to be in a better situation. A lot of times we find ourselves in those situations we must trust and believe in God and trust in the power of his might that he is able to do great things for us. What about you? Um, have you found yourself when people have ideas and dreams being a dream killer? Have you found yourself when people are faced with negative circumstances? Do you lose hope in their ability to succeed? I mean, if you lose hope in your ability to succeed, most definitely you're gonna lose uh, hope and the ability of others to succeed. Do yourself a favor and listen to a person's plans. Listen to a person's um, dreams. Listen to a person's hopes and make positive remarks. Encourage them. Don't be a discourager. Nobody wants to be around a discouraging Doug or discouraging Denise. We want to speak and be around people that encourage us, that lift us up. Even if you can't envision the dreams that another person has, at least agree with them in faith that God can and will bring his perfect will to and for them. And don't worry, because worry words of worries, worry worries a person down. But it's encouraging words can cheer a person up. That has been a review of day 26 of The Discouraging Tongue, as well as day 27, The Doubting Tongue. I'm going to read the affirmation once again. Anything is possible for me. Anything is possible for you if you believe. Therefore, I will declare my faith rather than to discuss my doubts. Speak and walk by faith. Know that you can and will be able to do those things. Because as I said at the beginning of this um, lesson, Ephesians 3 and 20 reads, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, 
abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. God gives us the Holy Ghost power and he is able to make it to where we are able to do great and mighty things. I will declare my faith rather than to discuss my doubts. You do the same thing. Declare your faith rather than to discuss your doubts and you'll find that your life will be easier. Well, that has been um, day 27, as well as an overview of day 26. So tomorrow we'll be on day 28. And I'm just gonna tell you guys, we only have, um, after tomorrow, it'll be two days um, of the day, the 30 days of taming our tongue. And I will tell you, I have really, really, really tried. And I, I, I can tell you, I have succeeded in hushing my mouth, um, just trying so hard not to say the things that my mouth wants to say and not to say the things that my flesh wants to say. Am I perfect? No. But... We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. That has been day 27 as well as day 26 overview of the 30 days of taming your tongue, my tongue, our tongue, as we are on a 30 day tongue, ta tongue task, Tum tongue fast, 30 day tongue fast. This is a book by Deborah smith Bagoos. I will put all of the information in the description box. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to click on the bell to be reminded of all of the videos that I upload. Please remember that caring is sharing and please put some um, ideas of what you might want me to read, what you might want me to study, ask some questions. Um, I know a lot of people are more so concerned about the drama that goes on YouTube than they are about the 30 days of taming our tongue. But I know there are men and women of God who definitely can look at this and look at this study and say, I can't believe I said that. Did I say that? Did I mean that? And we could and have learned a lot by this study. God bless you all. Um, have a wonderful weekend. And thank you so much for tuning in. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.